science, politics, fashion. Joan is New York City. Live, local, on it. 77 WABC. Susan Koenig, who is a writer and has really paid her writing dues. She's written for the Washington Post, worked at Seventeen Magazine, been a columnist for the New York Post, articles, essays everywhere, and a whole slew of books while animals sleep so close to the road. I wear the maternity pants in the family, and her latest, Teenagers and Toddlers Are Trying to Kill Me. And the best thing is that Susan laughs at herself, (laughs) makes us all laugh with her. And I remember hearing that Susan, who already had three children, and thought, that's it. They're great. They're in school. They're, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Suddenly he wakes up one day, feels a little sick to her stomach, and the result is another toddler is born. <laughs> How old was the child after that baby? Well, it had been five years. Right. So our, our youngest was on the bus to full-time kindergarten, goodbye, yeah. with his older siblings. And uh, it was September. And I turned toward our house, and I suddenly felt a very familiar, nauseous feeling. And and I really thought that someone had stuck a fork in me, and I was done, because um, I was almost 43. So Uh it was uh, was a miracle, we call him. A miracle, and it was met with some trepidation, too, (laughs) because freedom was fleeting. Freedom was, I had big plans, and uh, and it was right back to diapers and everything. Uh Uh And, you know, meanwhile, while the older kids were getting, you know, cell phones and phone calls from the opposite sex and everything else. And then we had the whole range going on. Right. And and as you say, this toddler, whom the bigger ones were supposed to watch many times, and you'd find the kid in the road or something, (laughs) when an older one got distracted. Well, they got distracted easily, but uh, I have to say the youngest is quite a survivor, because he's practically raised himself. He's very free range. Right. Yeah. (laughs) And independent, and probably very funny. Yeah. Well, he thinks he's a teenager, because he grew up with all these older kids, so, you know, he hangs out with the college students now and uh, he is funny was a joke a minute in my household I gotta tell you well and of course Susan is married to a comedian but the comedians most often aren't funny in real life your husband's funny he is very funny that's why I married him Mm -hmm. you know I thought he was very funny and uh, it's rubbed off on the kids and it's very competitive at the dinner table to be the funniest oh is that true yeah and it's actually mom who's the downer you know with you know chew your food and stop this nonsense and everything thing, and they just all try to top each other. Right, and don't pay a lot of attention to mom. <laughs> I love the chapter when you were going off to the beach for a week. Your dad had a house and right. the beach, and all the kids would take turns, and they'd go or go together and spend the week, and you took something for you, unheard of, a mother's helper. Yes. Oh, that was, we got to borrow a nanny. It was my girlfriend had a nanny to help with her kids and offered to bring her. And we didn't know what to do with ourselves, that she would wipe the sand off the smaller kids and put them down for naps and boss the older ones. And they would listen to her because she she wasn't their mother. That's right. (laughs) And And she was very consistent, too. Yes. Something that when you're a mom and it's all crazy, sometimes you, you lose that consistency. Well, you know what? No one's paying us. <laughs> well, I, you know, that was always my theory when I was young. I always worked, but I had a ton of friends who didn't in mm-hmm. those days. And I would often say to their husbands, give them a salary. They're working harder than anyone who's at work. You'll get a lot more for your money than you can imagine. <laughs> That's right? right. I'd like to be paid for laundry by the pound. Right? Well, horrible <laughs> laundry. Yeah. I mean, with all of it. You describe even picking up a cat that was lying oh, on a road yeah. and speaking of laundry, the smell, the towels. Oh, well, and the kids, you know, they thought, usually it's a child bringing home an animal, but they were rolling their eyes. Mom, what are you going to do with this cat? We have a cat. We have a dog. We have two turtles and a goldfish. And uh, there was a cat lying in the road uh, in our Westchester suburban town, and it wouldn't move in front of my car, and it turned out it was in diabetic shock. Uh So it's a good thing I picked it up. We found the home, and uh, 
when the lady said, oh, let me replace this towel that you wrapped my cat in, and my little one piped up, that's okay, all our towels are dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Teenagers and toddlers are trying to kill me. Susan Koenig's brand new book, and you will laugh, and you'll laugh at yourself. And of course, in the midst of all this, Susan's a daughter. She has a girl. Yes. And that has been a great adventure, too. It, tell the story of when your daughter decided she wanted to go off to a farm for a week. Well, yeah, there was it was a kind of a service program at her high school that you could volunteer to work on a farm, you know, mucking out stables and birthing goats. Did you know goats needed help giving birth to their little goats? I read your book, yes. so I knew, but I never thought of it. And goats, uh, we lived in a farm in rural Vermont, and goats are really precarious because they're sick all the time. Well, these goats, you can't let the baby goat touch the ground or it becomes a dirty goat. I don't know what that means, but it sounds sad. So they had these high school girls <laughs> catching, them. catching goats, and then they would become incredibly attached to them because they're adorable yeah, and they're babies. Thing. And uh, so my and daughter smart. became a certified goat midwife, oh. and which I can't tell you in college interviews how that stood out. I'm sure. <laughs> that, one other thing, kids from the East, that isn't it. You know, tutoring right. in Afghanistan is much more likely. Yes. Well, it was an interesting experience. And then, of course, she came home and said, I can't eat this meat. What are you doing? I'm vegan now. Get you away from prepared me. the yes. best meal. I stay. <laughs> we had that, too. My daughter Lizzie had a lamb that Aww. thought it, she was its mother. Mm -hmm. Sat in her lap. She. We actually rented it from the local farmer. Oh. You know. Oh, and it, rent a lamb. Anyway, he almost became lamb chops from the neighborhood dogs. So yeah. it was very complicated. Oh, my goodness. But she, from that day, seven, never ate meat again. Well, you know, that's a, it, 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 it's a it's a forming a formative experience though. So. Yeah, did your daughter stick to vegetarianism? She's she waffles a bit, you know, she explores, you know, the kids are now are very into sustainability and organic right. and where did this Green come from? So she's she's back and forth, but she was diehard for a while. And how with a house full of kids, now of course two were in college. Yes. Susan started very early. Yeah. Even though you probably didn't think it was early. It didn't seem that early, but but, uh, it's gone in a flash. Our daughter's turning 21. Uh, she's almost out of college. Yeah, she's got one more year. Two more payments, I like to think of yeah. it. <laughs> what does she want to do? Well, of course, she went into uh, school for foreign service, and now she's a theater performance major. Uh -oh. uh, but the nice thing is, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that and being married to a performer, but uh, she's becoming a producer, and she's the executive producer of her theater company, which that nice actor Bradley Cooper was was involved oh. with when he was at Georgetown. Bradley Cooper, that's right. Yes. A big star and a good in for her. Yes, and she's learning, you know, she's budgeting shows, she's hiring, no, so I feel like she's learning. You know what? That's a very interesting field. Yes. That if that's on a different side of journalism and entertainment. It's a practical side. Right. And she's also a very good waitress, which might mm -hmm. come in handy. It does. <laughs> Waitressing is always a good skill yes. if you're going into that business. Yeah. So how do you, mm -hmm. you don't live in the city, even though you grew up. You know what? We migrated back. We just sold our house in September. No. And yes, we're in Riverdale now in the Bronx. What happened? Oh. What made you do that? <laughs> well, we were we were kind of counting the days to come back. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were, my husband and I are both city kids, and um, we figured we're half done. Two were out of the house. Two were in the house. Our 15-year-old actually goes to high school in New York City, and so it just seemed like the right time. And uh, so we sold our house. We got a big apartment, and uh, we couldn't be happier. You know, it's, And Riverdale is beautiful. It's, it's kind of the best of both worlds. Right. You've got the country feel, but you're 10 minutes away right. from any place in Manhattan. I still have my minivan. <laughs> You do? You never got rid of that thing? <laughs> not, not yet. Not yet. Are your kids adjusted after you move them? Yes. I mean, the older kids are kind of have to remind themselves when they come home from college, where, where are they go? going? You know, yeah. not, not back to Westchester. And uh, the 15-year-old's Mr. Manhattan anyway. You know, he's looking for a one-bedroom. <laughs> he's ready to go. He would run away and join the circus if we let him. He's follow, following in his dad's footsteps. Oh, you're kidding. Wanting to be a comedian. Uh -huh. And then the 10-year-old, again, because he was so neglected 
as a child. He really goes with the flow, you know. You didn't really neglect him. You just had three other kids, and he had to do we were, a lot on his own. We were a little distracted, but uh-huh. he's a great kid, and uh, he's loving the city, and his grandmother's in the city, so it's nice. Which is good. So during all those hectic Westchester years, you gave yourself a little studio to sit down and work in. Um, well, I had uh, I had some space. I sometimes had to run away from home and work in the car, borrow a studio. Um, you know, we did some work on the house to give mom a place. But somehow, I would always end up at the kitchen counter with my laptop because you know moms can't go off and sequester themselves. No, although you took yourself. To a writer's colony. Oh, the retreat. Oh, my goodness. Well, it was interesting because Letty Pogrebin, whom you probably know, is a wonderful writer. Mm -hmm. And all her two of her daughters are in that business. And she has a son, too, and he's in the food business. But Letty used to say to her husband, with all these kids, pretend I'm dead. (laughs) And she would go (laughs) off to a writer's colony. Because... Otherwise, it was almost impossible. Yes, this was my absolute first time, and I got permission, and everybody said, you deserve it, and go for a week. And it was way off in Vermont, um, and I'm sure you're familiar with the no Wi-Fi and backcountry roads. I had to drive 12 miles to get a cell phone signal. And uh, some of these writers' colonies, and the one you described in Vermont... (laughs) If you had to go to the bathroom in the night, forget it. Yeah, it, was it wasn't a choice. in your cabin. Well, and I had a sort of a strange uh, thing happen in that the host, uh, who was a writer friend of mine, had become a, um, a, a Sasquatch researcher, and he was the real deal. He was very, very convinced that Sasquatches were actually on his property. I and so that gave me pause because he was very convincing, and for a city kid in in to the, hear noises, in lots the woods. of noises in Vermont. I had bats in the room roof and uh, and screeching owls and uh, it was a very I was really glad to come back to the kids <laughs> you want to know all those years we lived in Vermont we'd pull up our driveway which was a feat in itself you know it was like a mountain to get up we would make my husband do the animal check of a house before we went in a city we were terrified mice were nothing but he right. had to do the mice check the bat check whatever he could find in the house it could be 12 below we wouldn't go in unless he did that. Well, even just in the suburbs of New York City, we ran into a lot of wildlife. And now, the coyotes, black bears. Well, you forget you can be on 42nd Street with coyotes. Right. <laughs> it's a whole new world. Now, Susan, tell everyone where they can get these books. They're in paper. They're really funny. And they're going to cheer you up. Yeah, the new book, Teenagers and Toddlers Are Trying to Kill Me, and my first two books are all on Amazon, barnesandnoble.com. Um, the older books have been reissued in paperback, so it's really exciting. They make a fun set for a new mom or an old mom or a grandmom. And um, so I'm doing Amazon. I've been reading at Barnes & Noble. I'm going to do the Long Island Literary Festival. Good. That's a good one. Point at the end of the month. And then I just got invited to the uh, East Hampton Library Authors Night in that August. That is a lot of fun, and you're going to sell a zillion books. Well, it's fun, and there's celebrity. You know, it's good star watching there. Enjoy it. <laughs> well, all right, Susan, come visit me again. And today we're talking about teenagers and toddlers. I'm Joan Hamburg. This is WABC.